Well, surprise. <laughs> yes, I am so excited to actually talk about this game. Yes, so Finally. welcome back, everyone, to Nintendo Treehouse Live at E3. Uh, I'm Audrey. I'm here with Teresa and mm. Tim. And we have two very special guests with us. We have Sakamoto-san, the legendary creator of the Metroid series, as well as Jose from Mercury Steam. So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so and as we just saw, uh, we're going to take a look at Metroid, Samus Returns. That's so right. you've waited long enough. Let's jump right into yeah, it. Yeah, let's jump right in yes. to the start. So for the people at home that aren't familiar with the Metroid franchise, this is um, Nintendo's premier exploration-based sci-fi action game. Uh, it features Samus Aran, who is a renowned bounty hunter. And she's been sent by the Galactic Federation to planet SR388 to investigate and annihilate the Metroids. She's the best at what she does. Oh, yeah. She's super cool. Um, and this is actually a reimagination of the original Game Boy Classic that was released in 1991, uh, Metroid 2, Return of Samus. Um, and this game is just, it's beautiful. It's, it's a little bit shinier than the Game oh, Boy yes. version. <laughs> yes, it is. And it's, this game is still about discovery and exploration. You know, there's intense boss battles, and there's so many pathways to discover and you can take your time through it and, and this is really this is classic 2d metroid to a, a t it's got the isolation uh, the exploration and of course samus just generally being amazing yeah and the great thing about this being on whoop, on the 3ds is that this there's so much detail in the background and it's really heightened with the 3d feature on and you can't see it at home right now, but it, it does feel really, really good. Yeah, it, it sounds cheesy, but it adds a lot of depth to the experience. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and something I want to actually show here on the show floor. So uh, in the past, Samus was able to aim at 45 degree angles, but now she has this whole range of motion, which really allows for precision here. It's really nice because, especially as you get further into the game, there are enemies all over the place. So having the freedom to shoot anywhere you like is incredible. Yeah. So the free aim. Oh, thank you. So the free aim here is also really cool here, where when I'm actually moving it, and I actually have an enemy on site and target, it, the the cue will audio cue will change, and also that it will highlight in red. So again, it allows for a little bit more precision here. Yeah, it's still up to you to aim precisely, but that nice visual indicator is just very helpful. Yeah, and Samus here has her very basic abilities, and um, so as I keep exploring and and seeing new environments, I'll hopefully gather new abilities to upgrade my suit. So this is another new ability that Samus has in this game, and it's a melee counter. And if I time it appropriately and immediately shoot, I have a ver I do a critical hit on the enemy. But in the circumstance that I don't immediately shoot, I have some time to actually just shoot from afar and take give a give myself a little bit more leeway to not get hit. Uh, the melee counter is a new ability, as you mentioned, and it's really great because this game gets challenging. Oh yeah, it's very very difficult. And um, since we have Sakamoto-san here, uh, while we're speaking about challenges. Uh, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you encountered while developing this game. Qualified as a big challenge, but something that we face whenever we're working on it, on something like this with an established style of gameplay, it's adding, you know, what sort of new elements can we add to something that, again, is established and has had, uh, you know, had some success in the past. Yeah, so I mean, I really felt that it would be difficult, or could be difficult, to bring in new elements that would add a lot of excitement and at the same time make the fans of the franchise, you know, happy and satisfied. But, you know, I think this time with Samus Returns, I think we've done a really good job. And why is that? It's because we found this really amazing partner to work with. And that's Mercury Steam. Thank you very much, Jose. 
<laughs> thanks to you. Yes, thanks to both of you. <laughs> yes. And uh, as we were speaking, you actually got Samus's legendary morph ball ability. I did, and uh, this is very, very handy to get, as you can see, through certain tunnels here. Um, here's a save station, which I don't quite need right now. So I'm going to keep on going and exploring this area. And here, there's, this is a pretty uh, bleak area from where I just was. And you'll see this gate here. And this is a little different from the original game. Yeah, it, it definitely is. Um, and for people that haven't played the Metroid 2 in the past, this uh, purple liquid is actually very painful. And I'll just kind of... Yeah, don't... Oh, yep. she did it. Yeah. Ow. Yeah, so <laughs> I can't really go down there, and I want to. And I can't really interact with this right now. So I'm going to keep on moving forward and see... And that's really, that's mm -hmm. the nature of this game, is you'll come across areas that you just can't survive in yet, you just can't get past, and you'll have to acquire new tools and abilities to be able to keep exploring and keep pushing forward. Exactly. So since I couldn't go through the door, I went up and around it. So I'm going to keep on moving forward. And this is also um, a brand new feature to the Metroid franchise. These are Aeon abilities. Um, Aeon is a very mystical and powerful energy source, and they actually give abilities to Samus that are very different from the technical upgrades that she gets for her suit. So this one that I just gathered is called the Scan Pulse. And what it does is that, oh, uh, I should remind people that the Aeon abilities are actually not, they're limited. You yes. can't just spam <laughs> them whenever you want to. Um, and so they'll have their own energy, and you'll have to gather um, uh, power-ups uh, power for them and also um, more energy in order to refill that tank. Um, so this just to showcase... This scan pulse. Yeah, so to showcase the scan pulse, if you see the bottom screen, the map usually kind of uh, 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 explores once you start moving, but if I use the scan pulse, it'll actually open up this quadrant of map already for me. And also on the upper screen, it'll show these blocks that I can easily break. So now I know that, oh, there was an actual hidden path there. So And normally, you, you would just have to shoot everywhere to try and find breakable blocks. And you can still do it that way if you want to. But if you have the uh, Aeon to pull it off, the scan pulse is also very, very helpful. Yeah, keep in mind, though, that not everything can be easily um, broken with your laser. So, you know, that, that's kind of some ammo that you'd have to waste. And it, it's... It's nice to actually have the Aeon ability to strategize about, you know, what, which one am I going to use? Am I going to use my ammo, or am I going to use um, the Aeon ability in order to keep on discovering and exploring? Absolutely. And, you know, throughout her long career, Samus has had a lot of unique abilities at her disposal. And as we've seen already, this game adds even more. So, Jose, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the process you guys went through of adding new abilities like the melee counter or the Aeon abilities. Yes, well, from the beginning, Sakamoto san wanted my Curious team to challenge ourselves to bring new ideas to the cities. So we were given freedom to prototype a lot of different ideas and mechanics and see which ones would better fit within the Metroid universe. And once these ideas and mechanics were discovered, it was just a matter of iterating and policing the design. Oh, wonderful. They really add a lot to the experience, so good work. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> So here is an energy station, and I'm a little bit low, so I'm just going to take that. You it's always want to take advantage of those energy yeah. stations. Every little bit of health matters. Yeah, for sure. You'll notice that a beeping started. That's actually my Metroid detector, and it's telling me that there is a Metroid nearby. Um, again, for people that don't really know what Metroids are, they're an alien species that um, they're pretty dangerous and they suck up the life form of any alien species in order to survive. Yeah, you, you don't want to hug a Metroid necessarily. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Another thing I want to showcase here is actually the mapping system that this game has. So now that, um, in case I'm not able to go through a door because I don't have the ability to unlock it. Which happens okay. a lot. <laughs> yes. I have these pins now that I can just drop it onto the map and then that will kind of be my note for myself that, oh, I want to revisit this later once I grab an ability and maybe I can try it later. And as you mentioned, this game is so much about exploration and going back and trying to find every square inch of the map to find all of the many hidden secrets. So this pin system is actually very, very useful. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting close, but I'm going to go investigate your, this area. Your Metroid senses are still tingling, so <laughs> keep searching. 
He's getting closer because the beeping is getting a little bit more insistent. Oh, nice. Found a hidden missile tank. Yeah. But see, there was an example where I, I kind of knew already that those pass was there, but the, the scan pulse would have been very useful right there to kind of show those box. Here's another safe station. So, see, there we go. Sam Pulse told me that that block is breakable, but I can't shoot it. So I'm gonna try a missile instead. It's open. And that's a good point. If you ever run into an area you can't progress past, use all of your weapons and yeah. abilities. Oh, it's a little friend. Hi, friend. That was a Metroid, but we're actually not fighting him. We're actually fighting his first evolution. And this is known the Alpha Metroid. He looks twice as friendly as a regular Metroid. So if I time it correctly, I can actually uh, melee counter him, and it gives me an advantage to actually hit him for more damage. Uh, you'll also see that he'll drop these little sparks. If I actually uh, hit those sparks, I'll get more replenish ammo replenishment. So in case I en end up using all of my missiles, I could always go around him and try to shoot those in order to get more missiles. Nice melee countering. And I'll say, I don't know how well the home audience can hear this, but the sound effects in this game are incredible. The music, the atmospheric sounds are just really great. So uh, Sakamoto-san, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what into, went into the development of the soundtrack for this game. Ah, well, we have two of the composers who worked on Super Metroid on the team for Samus Returns. Metroid and, and, and they've worked on pretty much every Metroid title since that time doing music for us. Um, and so I really don't have to say any, anything. They just go do what they do, and what they do is create great music. Excellent. Well, lock them up. Don't ever let them go. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. So you made quick work of that Alpha Metroid. Good work. I did. So I'm actually going to go return to that gate that I couldn't get to before see what happens now. As I make my way there. So in the original Metroid 2, whenever you defeated a certain prerequisite number of Metroids, the ground would rumble and then you would know that you would be able to proceed to the next area. So now in this game, you have these gates. And if you press on it and you enter the Metroid DNA that you had just gathered from the Metroid you just killed, it will enter into this gate, unlock, reduce this hazardous liquid that was killing me before, yeah. and now I'm able to get to the next area. It's really cool having this really visual cue of your progress in the game as well. Yeah, so now I'm gonna go to a, a later area in the game. And um, we've gotten a glimpse of it a little bit, but the 3DS hardware really goes a long way in bringing this world to life. It helps communicate the isolation of Samus being stuck on this alien planet. So um, Sakamoto-san, could you speak a little to how you uh, used the 3DS tech to bring this world to life and really reimagine it?道の惑星サムスの so, yeah, I mean, I do think that with this title, of course, with Samus, the 3D, uh, the glasses free 3D, uh, the 3D effects are put to great use. It really does help build uh, the world that we're exploring. But I'd like to go ahead and ask Jose to talk a little bit about some of the more uh, technical aspects. Yes, it was very clear to us from the beginning that if we wanted to convey to the player 
the greatness of the inner depths of the planet and the past glory of the Chosen Civilization, we have to, to provide a big sense of scale thanks to the depth uh, given by the 3DS capabilities. So we wanted to reflect this from early on in the development process, this scale, uh, through the first initial concept parts. Thank you so much. Oh, and you've gotten yourself in trouble, Teresa. Yeah, <laughs> I always do. I ran into his room and he didn't like me being here. Oh, you woke him up from a nap. Don't yeah. do that. But I'm stuck here until he gives me leave. <laughs> and now's not the time to play with it necessarily, but I wanted to point out that you also got your spider ball upgrade. That's right. Which and is I, really also, handy. <laughs> I also got um, bombs here. So these are actually very handy for oh. taking him out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> so while you. Um, Play with your new friend. <laughs> um, uh, this is obviously a, an enemy from the original game, and that brings to mind the fact that uh, all of the enemies have actually been re redesigned for this version. So, Jose, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about what the process was for redesigning the enemies from the original game. Yes, we wanted to respect the visual design of the regular enemies as, pa as much as possible, um, but we had to adapt the attacks, movements, and behaviors so they could fit with our new gameplay and without making them lose much of their original feel in the process. And as for the Metroids, they were the stars of the show along with Samus in the original game, and this wanted also to be the, the same in our game. And they, well, they suffer a massive overhaul from the visuals of the original game and in their gameplay mechanics. And also we wanted to clearly show the transition in their life on from one Metroid to another. And this is something that is very clearly reflected in the movements, behaviors, and, and attacks. Oh, thank you. And good work, Tree. <laughs> oh, thank you. So um, I can actually take the spider ball. And the spider ball is actually an ability here that's very, uh, very unique to Metroid 2. Um, but I'm actually going to do a very hard technique <laughs> that I am not doing very good right now. I swear I practiced this. <laughs> the bomb jump. Oh, no. All right, last Metroid try. Metroid fans have spent hours trying to get to the craziest places using bomb jump. Oh, no. <laughs> but um, as you're trying to work your way around this map, that also brings me to the point that a lot of the maps have been redesigned for the Ooh. new system. So, Jose, yes. can you speak a little to the process of redesigning the maps as well? Yes, yeah, so we wanted to respect as much as possible the original layout of the original game because it has such a distinct structure within the Metroid series. And, well, we wanted uh, to have a lot of uh, new series of new things because we want it to be felt also new and we added lots of sections different from the original game because we wanted to accommodate all of our gameplay needs and also we wanted the game to be more the exploration to be more dynamic and diverse than in the original game introducing some classic abilities from other games in the series but were, that were not present in the original game and also we added some new, of course, special abilities that are unique to this title. So the combination of both made us realize some very interesting situations regarding level design for players to actively figure out their way forward in new ways. Thank you. Actually, before I take this elevator, I want to show this. This is also a new feature to Metroid Samus Returns, and it's a teleport station. This actually helps a lot with the mobility of the game, where instead of backtracking all the way through previous areas, you can actually use the teleport to quickly jump into a new area. And this actually really helps when you're trying to gather some items that you weren't able to in the past or explore new pathways that you weren't able to before. I'm not going to take it right now. I'm actually <laughs> going to go back and take this elevator to a new area. But you're right, it's such a huge uh, addition to the game, being able to more quickly get to the areas you've already been to and find all those juicy secrets yes. you weren't able to get at before. Well, because like gathering all these items, it, it actually rewards you in the end because it gets, it does get more it's difficult really as you further <laughs> get into the planet. And the baddies do get really hard. Um, so you definitely want to get all those upgrades and the items and it rewards you. But you can also choose not to if you want a challenge. So. I've visited previous lava rooms before, so I know that this red door looks a little bit dangerous, but I'm going to go in anyway, just to show. You're a rebel. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, I don't want that. Okay. So 
Um, I'm going to actually use the scan pulse because I see there's something up there, and I'm pretty sure there's a pathway, but just to make sure. Yeah. While you have the Aeon energy, might as well. There we go. Excellent. So we're going to go up here. I love how if you had just shot up above you, it, it would have looked like there wasn't anything to break. So yeah. it's actually good that you used your scan pulse right there. Yeah, I, I have gotten lost more than <laughs> once. Here's another suit upgrade. Oh, I love this. <laughs> It does feel really good, really nice. epic. And I love how vibrant the colors are. It's just, this world is so Metroid, so beautifully yeah. Metroid. And it's just, again, it's really cool when the 3D feature is on because you get to see all the stuff that's happened in the background. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go in here. And now Samus has her classic suit. Yeah, her various suit. So uh, I can't go here, so let's try going back to the way we came from. Oh, that was close. That was close. That was very close. I like to play it dangerously. <laughs> and now you can survive the very, yes. very hot lava. So we're going to explore this room now. And we could always go back and explore other lava rooms to see what we missed. I have to point out that this is all one planet, this is all SR388, but look how different the environments are. It's a big planet. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of different areas and, and a lot of variety. There's so much variety, yeah. And every every um, every area is just so colorful uh -huh. and unique on its own. So here I'm going to show a new Aeon ability called uh, Lightning Armor. And what it does, it gives this green glow to Samus, but also overcharges my melee and lets me go through enemies without taking much damage. But it does take away um, from my Aeon pool. And so I want to actually save it in case I need it later. Yeah, every time you get hit, it actually makes your Aeon gauge go down. So you That's can't right. just run foolishly through a group of enemies unless you want to feel a lot of pain. <laughs> yeah, so here's another door that I'm unfortunately not able to get in through. So I'm going to do another pin here. But I'm also going to show here um, there's this information screen that will actually see, it will show different items that are shown in the map. And if you're not quite sure what that icon means, it will actually tell you here. Um, and it will actually unlock too once um, you've discovered it and you know how to interact with it. So definitely keep, keep an eye on these because these are actually really informative. It'll help you remember what you already know. Yeah. And uh, we've already seen a few new uh, Chozo artifacts, but that brings me to the question. Uh, Sakamoto-san, can you tell us a little bit about the decision to integrate more Chozo artifacts into this version of the game? と、他のメトロイドゲームに比べて、このso, you know, this game is set on SR388, and it's a, a planet that was home to the Chozo civilization at one point, and so it, it saw the Chozo flourish, and it also saw them crumble. So this whole area has this historical background of being a place just sort of filled with, with lots of riddles. So that's why you see all of these, again, Chozo ruins that you mentioned throughout the, throughout the game. サムスリターンズ遊んでいただくとその文明の謎がある程度わかるんじゃないかなと思って。And I think if you, you know, get a chance to play uh, Samus Returns, you might find some of the answers to the riddles that the Chozo um, civilization left behind. What a tease he is. さらに <laughs> <laughs> But it is possible that there may be some new and more like intriguing riddles introduced through the game as well. Oh, fine, I guess everyone's just gonna have to wait and see. <laughs> 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 Thank you, You've gotten yourself into trouble again. <laughs> I did. So this is the second evolution of the Metroid species. This is the Gamma. Um, I did. A, I was able to do a counter melee on him finally as he came up close to me. But I'm also going to use Ice Beam because it seems to be really weak to his nucleus. So I'm just going to keep on attacking him. But yeah, he's he's got a dynamic set of moves. He's swooping down on me. He's throwing electricity on me. But that's a good point. If you're ever fighting an enemy or a boss and 
your weapon of choice doesn't seem to be making a big dent, try and try one of your other weapons or abilities because right. they might be a little more successful. And oh, since I'm a little bit low on health, I'm gonna feel safer if I put on my uh, lightning armor. So I'm just gonna go here. <laughs> oh. You've made him mad. Yeah, he is not happy with me. I'm just gonna throw this out there. Those spider legs are really creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not a fan of spiders, so yeah, this guy creeps me out. Oh, he's turned red though, so you're doing well. Yes, almost I'm, there. I should be almost there. And that's another kind of visual indicator to show you that you're getting closer to making mincemeat of this guy. Yeah, and there's all those audio cues too for when when's the right time to, um, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> when's the right time to melee him. So it only happens when he goes down on the ground, but yes, I was Got able to, to successfully kill him. Good work. <laughs> all right, well. With that, I actually want to show another later area in the game because I think it'd be really cool to show the fans. So. Excellent. Let's do it. So while you switch to your other save file, uh, Sakamoto-san and Jose, uh, we were hoping you could tell us a little bit about how you went about balancing this game because there's obviously a lot of abilities and it must have been difficult to balance making them feel uh, useful to players without taking away from the challenge. まあ、well, of course, you know, uh, it's, it feels great. It's exhilarating to use these really powerful dy and dynamic abilities. And, you know, players want to use them, and we want them to use them, of course. But, you know, one of the things we have to be careful of is if we you know, overuse them, if we make them too powerful, it reduces, you know, some of the tension that you feel in the game, and it sort of has the counter effect of actually reducing the excitement and sort of, uh, again, that, that thrill that we want players to, to feel. So, uh, again, it's a, it's a really delicate balance. あの、well, yeah, and I think a good example of some of the difficulty in that fine-tuning is what we just saw on screen, is this, this beam burst. Um, and what's difficult, again, about finding that balance is you have to measure the, uh, the effect of the, the, uh, the weapon, and you also have to take into, fact, or take into consideration the amount of energy uses and the, the supply of energy that's available to you. And trying to come up with, uh, again, a, a balance that works throughout the game and keeps all of those factors in mind it, it can be quite challenging. I think, you know, we, we put a, quite a load on, on Mercury's team and having them do that, but I think they did you know, a remarkably good job. Yes, I completely agree with Sakamoto San Rose. It was difficult to balance the new abilities, not only because they can be used alone, but only because they can be used in combination between them. And also they can be combined with the classic abilities too. So at the end it was pretty pretty tough, but we however are very confident that we finally found the best a possible balance for all players to fully enjoy them. Yeah, thank you. You achieved a great balance, and trust me, it's still difficult. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so my Metroid detector went off again. And this is the Gamma Husk, so I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be facing him. Ma maybe it's something cuddlier. Oh, <laughs> hey, little guy. <laughs> or maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. Um, so this is the next evolution. <laughs> This is the Zeta, and he's he is, mean. he's pretty gnarly. I'm not a big fan of him. <laughs> and as Sakamoto-san was saying that about the beam burst, I actually wanted to showcase this other Aeon ability because it is so power, it's so cool, and it feels really powerful. Oh, and I missed my moment to, to the melee counter. He does so much damage, too. He does. 
But I'm going to use a combination of abilities here from Missile to Grapple to Beam Burst. You really have to be on your game with this guy because he switches up his patterns a oh. lot. Oh, he does. He's hard to predict. Any. Yeah, he's hard to predict and he totally aims for me too. Mm -hmm. Like, he, he's got me down. Nice. That's just the beautiful melee counter too. I love how it slows down time and it has that really cynematic presentation. Yes, it feels so epic and action y and I absolutely love it. And this is my least favorite move. <laughs> this one gets me every time. Oh god. Oh. Oh. And now you, you died on purpose so that we can yes, see Zero Suit Samus. She looks Hi. so elegant there. Beautiful, yes. <laughs> So right. thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I, I aim to please. Yes. <laughs> all right, I'm going to try this again. Yes, you can do this. We all believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to skip the cutscene because I can. I'm going to, whoa, get right into that. All right. <laughs> nice melee counter yeah. right off the top. Oh, he was nice enough to give it to me, so <laughs> I'll take it. Yes. Side, so I got a good shot of his nucleus. <laughs> you know, he's not invited to your birthday party anymore. No. He ruined it. I I like green, but <laughs> not in my face. <laughs> no. Oh. And as the, we're showcasing here, the new abilities, uh, your beam burst there, uh, your lightning armor, they add to the experience, but as to the balance they were talking about earlier, they definitely don't make it easier. Uh, you have the ion gauge, and you can't spam these abilities at all. I mean, I think <laughs> you're yeah. already out of them, so. Ah, <laughs> oh, again. It's all right, third he's, time's the charm. He's pretty strong, yeah. I'm, he's pretty awful. I'm hopeful that this third time I can get it. Yes. You have the power of Samus <laughs> at your disposal. I have all her abilities. All right, let's try this again. Oh, of course. <laughs> oh, oh, I missed him. He missed me at that time. <laughs> that was lucky. Oh. He's going to feel that tomorrow. Hope so. <laughs> so mean. That was your favorite. Oh god, I absolutely hate this ability. <laughs> you know, he, he's more afraid of you than you are of him. Is, Just that, remember that. is that really That's the case? The truth. <laughs> I don't think he cares much about me. <laughs> You have a handle on it, he switches it up. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I always need to be on guard with him because it's never the same pattern or consistent at all. You're getting really close, though. I think you can do this. Oh, I don't know. I got one bar left. <laughs> oh. oh. No. No. Oh, so, so close. close. <laughs> All right, I can do it. I can do this. I we, swear. We believe in you. <laughs> this is the time. <laughs> and he's not going to do that move. Maybe that you hate over and over again. <laughs> Maybe Sakamoto san can give me some tips. Maybe I don't Good luck. That's all I get. No pressure having the creator of Metroid watching you. No. <laughs> dynamic the beam burst looks. It is, it feels so good. Ah. 
Oh. And I ran out of Aeon energy. Oh, that was my best one. Oh no. <laughs> Gotta do the old fashioned way now. Oof. Missiles it is. Oh. Oh, that was close. Come at me. Come on. Just stay down. Yes. Oh, finished with the melee counter. That's beautiful. Yes. <laughs> well worth oh, the wait. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Good work, Jason. <laughs> <Jesus. laughs> uh, well, that is all we have to show for game footage. But we do have some cool announcements to also show to the folks at home. So yes. I'm really excited. Shall we? Oh, we shall. <laughs> all right. So. Uh, as you probably might have seen in the very beginning of the game, the surface area, uh, Amiibo functionality is active in this game. Um, it does support the two Samus, uh, the Zero Suit Samus and the regular Samus from the Super Smash Brothers line. But there's also two new Amiibo that we're so excited to show you guys. So we actually have them right here. I'm going to ask you to hold. Actually, yes. no. I'm going to give you the honors Yay. of holding him because he's so awesome. My little friend. So, <laughs> You get the Metroid, and he, this is the best part. He's actually squishy. He actually feels like a Metroid. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> and he's like breaking out of this little case and everything. Yep. And then you also have uh, <laughs> Samus, again, here. But she's in her classic Metroid 2 pose, and that is just so, so cool. Like the amount of detail that's around her, it's just, it's so amazing. She feels so cool. And so, it, yeah. these are going to be great additions to my collection, maybe your collection. Oh, yeah, definitely yes. my collection. <laughs> I'm a super big fan of Metroid. Yes. Um, so we, we can't, unfortunately, tell you what the functionality is in this segment, but we will announce it at a later time. Um, but we wanted to show you these because they're so, so cool. Yes. Um, yes. And... Uh, and uh, before we go, I yeah. uh, wanted to ask if uh, Sakamoto-san and Jose have any uh, final thoughts they'd like to tell our studio Yes, I wanted to th uh, thank Sakamoto-san and Nintendo for relying on us uh, to develop this new Metroid game. So thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, 私たちもあのマーキュリースティームさんというすごくいいパートナーに巡り合えてあの2Dメトロイドの可能性を yeah, I Thank think you. you know we are very happy, of course, to have come, you know, been uh, been lucky enough to, to team up with Met Mercury Steam on this project, and we really feel that the world, uh, the potential for the 2D uh, Metroid franchise, has really just opened up for us a lot. So thank you so much. One other thing I'd like to talk about today. あの、実は、え、今回のサムスリターンズでは、えっと、スペシャルエディションですね。特典付きのものも発売されます。Yeah, so we've actually we're going to launch and and put on put on the market a special edition for Metroid Samus Returns. Oh, there so. it is. Oh, awesome. Oh, that's so pretty. So it also has on the cover the original pose from the Metroid 2 Return of Samus. So that that's so cool. Yeah, and we've got a soundtrack there and reversible covers. So yeah, that's so pretty neat. the soundtrack is actually called Samus Archives. Um, it's a music CD and it has about, I think, 25, 25 tracks. Yeah. yeah, and it's just a collection of all the games that have come out uh, so far for the Metroid series featuring our beloved heroine, Samus, um, including this one. So uh, I hope you guys really, I I'm super excited for it, so I hope you guys are too, and it's it's a really cool treat. Yes, thank you so much for uh, telling us about that, Sakamoto-san. Yes. Thank you, Jose. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. So uh, I think later today we're going to have a trailer. Oh, that's right. So one more treat for you all. <laughs> um, so those of you that have a Nintendo 3DS at home, you're actually able to see the trailer that aired earlier today. And it actually, if because you have a Nintendo 3DS, if you're able to pr put on the 3D functionality, you'll be able to see that 3D depth and, dis and display, and you'll just be able to see how isolated and, and cool and all that depth that's in Metroid. So um, we're really excited to have that available for you today, um, and you could download it for free on the Nintendo eShop. Yes, and uh, thank you so much for tuning in. We we're so happy to be able to show yes. you Metroid Samus Returns. Totally thank you again, Sakamoto.